In this presentation, we will take a look at some examples related to indirect expense allocation. The scenario is that we have these indirect expenses. We want to apply them out to different departments, but they are involved in different departments. We need some method to apply these expenses out to those departments. To do that, we will choose an activity base. We will then use that activity base to come up with percentages. Those percentages then being used to allocate these expenses to the departments. Why? because we can't allocate these expenses evenly because of the different amount of use of these related expenses per department. To do this, we're going to have different types of activity bases that we think are going to be most applicable to that uh, allocating that particular type of expense. The method we will use will look much the same, however. So note that we want to get used to the method. Once we know the method, we can apply it to basically any type of activity base that we have and then consider the idea why would we use different types of activity bases in order to allocate different types of indirect expenses. So here's going to be our data. We've got the sales, cost of goods sold, direct expenses, which are going to be the salaries, insurance, utilities, direct uh, depreciation and maintenance. We're not focusing here on the direct expenses. Remember the direct expenses are those items that we can apply directly to each department. Therefore, there's not much of an issue. They're fairly easy for us to apply to the department. We are then going to be considering those items that we cannot apply to the department as easily because they are going to be used by multiple departments. Then we're going to have our allocation basis. These are going to be the basises that we use for indirect expenses depending on the indirect expense that we use. Now remember that these basises will change, will be different from company to company. It's our job as the company to decide what the best allocation base is to use. There's no perfect system. There's no, this is the right way to do it. What we're trying to say is, hey, what's going to be the best driver, the best basis that we can use to make a ratio analysis to allocate our costs most appropriately. This could change from indirect expense to indirect expense. And it also changes with regards to how much time we want to put in place to make these allocations. So these are going to be our basises. We've got the, the salaries is going to be based on sales. We've got insurance is going to be based on the square footage and office expenses is going to be based on the number of employees. These are the indirect expenses that we're going to apply out. So we have salaries of 26,000. Again, indirect expense, remember what that means. There's multiple departments then that these salaried individuals work for. And therefore we have to take their salaries, their expense, the cost of them for the company and apply them out to the departments they work in, in some format. We, it's not a direct salary. We can't apply it directly to department A or B in this case but we're going to have to find some method to do so. We're going to use sales as a percentage to drive that to drive that allocation. Then we're going to have the insurance here. So here's the indirect insurance. And again, for A and B, this insurance is covering both A and B. We need to allocate the insurance to A and B departments in some way. To do that, we're going to use the square footage as a percentage allocation method. And then we're going to have the depreciation uh, 15,800 again they're in the same building a and b we're going to imagine we need to apply out the uh, depreciation probably use the square footage there as well and then we have the office expenses 46,000 we have just office expenses this category of expenses for the office both a and b it's not broken out how do we apply it to both of them we've chosen to use the number of employees because we think that's going to be a good driver as to how much they're going to consume in terms of office expenses. Then we're going to have our, our related information in terms of the square footage. A and B. A uses 32,900 square feet and B uses 14,100. We're going to need this information if we use square footage as an allocation as we are for insurance. Number of employees, 7,248. We're going to need to know how many employees are in department A and B if we're going to use the number of employees as an allocation base as we're doing with the office expenses. So let's go through these. We're going to go through these in, uh, indirect expenses first. Let's take a look at our departmental contribution income statement. We're going to have our sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit. These are straightforward numbers, standard income statement type numbers. We're then going to have our direct expenses. Remember, these are the expenses that we can apply directly to the department. We're taking this directly from our problem. What we want to concentrate on now is the indirect expenses. So that's going to give us, if we subtract this out, the gross profit minus the total direct expenses gives us the departmental 
contributions to overhead. This is an important number because many times this is the number that basically uh, we might make a value decision as to whether or not the company is, uh, if the department's not doing well, if there's a loss, if long as this number is positive, they are contributing to overhead. Remember that the other expenses that we look into here, the allocated expenses are often expenses we would have whether or not we, ha we eliminate a, a particular department. So the allocated expenses, in other words, there's a question as to whether or not uh, they would still be there if we were to eliminate a department. However, we do want to allocate it to the department for other types of de decision-making processes. So we'll break those out. We're going to say these are going to be the allocated uh, expenses that we have down here or the indirect expenses. And we ha we've already listed them out. We've come up with the numbers for them. These are the ones we're going to recreate these numbers for the indirect expenses. Again, the direct expenses, fairly straightforward to which department they will go. Indirect expenses are the ones that we're going to have to do some allocation method. Let's look into those methods. So first, we'll take a look at the salaries. So we're concentrating on the salaries. We're going to say that we have department A and B. This is going to be a standard kind of comparison. Then we're going to take the sales. Why sales? Here's the sales numbers. Why are we taking those sales numbers when we're trying to allocate salary? Be just because we decided for sales to be the activity base. And all we're going to use do is use sales to come up with a ratio percentages that we can then use to apply the cost of the salary between the two departments. So to, the way to do that is we're just going to take our percentages. We're going to say, all right, here's sales for A, here's sales for B. There's the total sales. We can then just take the 825600 divided by the total, 1290000. That's going to be 64%. We could take the 464,400 divided by the total, 1290000. That's going to be 36%. So if we do that, our percentage is uh, 6436, and that adds up to 100. So now we have percentages. Uh, how are we going to break out the salaries? We're going to break it out 6436. That's going to be the percent breakout. So now we'll, we know what the total salaries is, 26,000. We'll just multiply the 26,000, of course, times the 64 and the 36. 26,000 times 0.264 uh, uh, <laughs> is 16,640. And then the 9,360. And that adds up to the 26,000. So all we did, of course, is use these percentages to allocate out. The percentages have to add up to 100. They will because what we did is we just took the sales for the two items and it took the percentage of the total sales. So once again, remember that it, it's not the case that sales has anything to do with salaries per se. We just think that sales is a, is a good activity base to use to come up with some percentages that we can then use to apply out so that uh, the salaries are applied out more appropriately than just dividing them by two. Now we're going to do the same thing for insurance. And again, the method will be much the same here, but we're just going to use a different activity base. So we're going to say, okay, insurance, here's going to be our insurance. We're going to say department A, department B. And then instead of taking the sales up top, we're going to take the square footage. So we're going to say, hey, this is the square footage. We're going to have to determine, of course, how much square footage A is taking up, how much square footage B is taking up. And then we're going to say A is taking up 32,900, B is 14,100 adding up to 47,000. Again, what does square footage have to do with insurance? Is it part of the insurance cost? Is it part of the bill that we created for the insurance? No, it doesn't have to be, maybe it is, but it doesn't have to be anything to do with the cost of insurance. We just said, we're, all we're trying to do is say, what would be an appropriate way for us to take this insurance bill, 7,200, and apply it out to these two departments? We can't just divide it by two because they're different sizes that doesn't seem appropriate how can we apply this out in an appropriate way we determined that square footage might be an appropriate way to apply out insurance and therefore took the square footage of the two places adds up to forty-seven thousand. then we can easily just come up with percentages in the same fashion that we can then use to apply out the seven thousand two hundred by taking the thirty two nine hundred divided by the 47,000. So we just take the one department divided by the total, that's 70%. We do that for the other 14,100 divided by 47,000, 30%, adds up to 100%. So then we could take these items, these percentages, how are we gonna break out the insurance then? We're gonna break it out 70, 30, 70, 30%. So then we take the 7,200 for insurance, 
7,200 times 0.7, 70%, 5,050, and 2,160. So that's how we broke it out over here. So again, we know the total. We don't know how to break it out. We then determine an activity base to do so. We decide what an appropriate base would be instead of using sales this time. We could have. If we used sales, we would just we would follow the same pattern we did last time, which is to take these 6436. We decided that 6436 breakout shouldn't apply to the insurance. We think it would be better to use the 7030 based on the square footage because square footage is a better cost driver, a better indicator of what the allocation should be. So then we'll do the same thing again, but now with depreciation. So same kind of method. We're going to say, okay, here's department A, here's department B. Once again, we're going to use square footage, which seems appropriate for depreciation. If we're using depreciation on the building, we would think, okay, then maybe that's square foot. So we'll take the 32.9, the 14.1. That adds up to 47,000. The 32.9 divided by the 47,000, once again, is that 70.30. Same breakout. This whole area is the same. Only difference is we're applying that same activity base now to the total depreciation. We know what the total is. We didn't know how to break it out. How are we gonna break it out? 70, 30, why? Because we're basing it on the square footage. So now we take the 70% times the 15, eight, 11,060, the 30% times the 15, eight, 4,740 to get our total 15,800. That's gonna be our breakout for depreciation. And then we'll take the office, same kind of concept, different activity base. So we'll say A and B for the office expenses here. We have the office expenses. We decided that sales isn't the best one to use. We don't want to use the square footage for the office expenses. We think the number of employees is most relevant there because these are going to be office expenses that, you know, probably going to use by the employees. The one with more employees probably uses more office expense. So we're just going to count the number of employees per office and say, all right, well, there's 72 employees for department A. Uh, department B, 48 employees. Once we have that, we add them, them up, 120. We do our ratio analysis, which is each department, 72 divided by the total, 120. That gives us 60% here. And of course, 48 over 120 gives us 40%. So how are we going to break out the office expenses on a 60-40 basis, A and B, based on the number of employees? So then we're going to have the 46,000 times 0. 0.6 and that's going to give us the 47.6 and there we have that now remember when you do these kind of allocations we also want to just we want to be able to to explain why we chose this activity base how we're going to do this you can imagine us going to meetings with the department manager of a and the department manager of b that are going to be kind of um, discussing these allocations they're not they're going to want to have different allocations that benefit their department so, of course, we're going to have to be able to say, why, why are we allocating on these activity bases? Uh, what's the relevance of, of these activities? Is this fair? We're going to have to explain the, the process and say, hey, we're trying to make this as fair as possible. We think this is the best allocation we can do for these different types of expenses. Here's why. And, and go forward from there. And it could be a constant kind of negotiation type of process in terms of the appropriate allocations.